Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing digital realty stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Digital Realty Trust is a REIT that invests in data centers. It owns over 200 data center facilities totaling 34.5 million rentable square feet. The data centers are in the US, Europe, Asia, Canada, and Australia. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 37 billion market cap. They're trading at 132 a share and they have 280 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has positive and growing free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. They also have positive and growing net income. Revenue is a sales for the company and that also grows at pretty nice rate, two and a half billion to 3.6 billion. This is their income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. And then the difference is their gross profit. That was 2.2 billion in the trailing 12 months, higher than 2019 of 2 billion. Then below that is operating expenses. And then you have your operating income, which is also the highest in the trailing 12 months. The company has a good amount of debt. So they have a pretty high interest payment on their debt. And then other income and expenses. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. The company had pre-tax income of $685 million and they pay taxes of only $33 million. That's about 5%. REITs have to pass through at least 90% of their profits to their shareholders in a form of dividends. So REITs are taxed on a lower cost basis than traditional corporations. Traditional corporations have to deal with double taxation where they pay taxes on their income and then the investors pay taxes on the dividends they receive. REITs avoid double taxation. Their net income was half a billion, which is growing each year. So everything looks good so far. This is the company statement of cash flows and the top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. And they do not have any capital expenditures. So their free cash flow is the same as their operating cash flow. So you can see the company has a healthy amount of free cash flow each year, up to 1.6 billion. The company seems to be issuing a good amount of capital stock, 400 million in 2017, half a billion in 2019, and 2.2 billion in the trailing 12 months. They're also issuing a lot of debt, 4.5 billion in 2017, but they paid 3.7 billion. So they increased their debt, 800 million in 2017. They increased it about 3 billion in 2018. They decreased at half a billion in 2019 and it was pretty much a wash in the trailing 12 months. So in order for the company to acquire more data centers, they need to use their operating cash flow in addition to debt and equity financing. Let's look at their operating cash flow. That was 1.6 billion. And to calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income that was 650 million. Then you have to add or subtract to the non-cash items on the income statement. They had half a billion of operating gains. So we have to minus that out on the statement of cash flows. They also pass through a $940 million depreciation expense. We have to add that back to the statement of cash flows and then some other non-cash items. So even though they had 600 million of net income, they generated 1.6 billion of cash flow. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 10 and a half billion of equity and 10 and a half billion of debt. So they have 50% equity, 50% debt and their WAC is 6.36% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value which is all cash flows past year for that 66 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 59 billion dollars. We divide that by 280 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 211. They're trading at 132, so they're trading at a 37% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little lower than me. They're at 190 a share, but they're also saying the stock is undervalued. 
This is where the stock has been trading the past five years, so it looks like it's been on a steady incline. It has dropped a bit the past few months, but it seems like a great value, at least according to my model and according to Simply Wall Street. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $39,000 today. If you did not reinvest the dividends, you'd have about $32,500. So if you invested $10,000 into this company in 2011, you would have made money regardless of when you sold. But it seems like the longer you held, the better off you'd be with this company because it's just only going up. They also pay a nice dividend, so you have to add that to the capital appreciation. If you sold at the very peak, it would have been probably around $42,000. But if you're still holding, you're at $39,000. Still a good return on investment. This company pays a 3.4% dividend. And to calculate dividend, you can just add up the last four dividend payments, then divide by the stock price. And the payout ratio is 235%. Payout ratio is dividends over net income. And included in net income is depreciation and other non-cash items. So that's why the payout ratio looks so high. But I like to look at dividend over free cash flow, and that was 79%. They still had 21% of their free cash flow left over to invest back into the company. And this stock has a really low beta, 0.1. So the stock moves 10% of the market. It has a very low volatility. And in the past 52 weeks, the stock went up 12%, which is a little worse than the S&P 500. The low was 105, the high was 165. And the stock is trading lower than its 50-day moving average and 200-day moving average. So it seems to be on a downtrend. And when the 200-day moving average crosses above the 50-day moving average, that's called the death cross. That's a bearish signal. About one and a half million shares are traded each day for this stock. And almost all the shares outstanding are on float. Most of the shares are held by institutions. It has a pretty low short percentage. 2.3% of the shares on float are shorted. Capital Research owns 15% of the company's stock. Vanguard also owns 15%. Then 9% for BlackRock, 5.5%, 3.5%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 12. The median is 14.9. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 69.2. So investors are paying $69 for $1 of earnings. But price of earnings isn't a good metric to look at when valuing REITs. You should look at funds from operations per share. We're going to look at that ratio later when we compare other companies in this industry. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. There are 10.2, a bit higher than the average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're between the median and average. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet, and they have 10.6 billion, but 2.8 billion of tangible equity. They have about $8 billion of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 1.9, so they can cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity. They're only at 5%, which is a low ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can only cover 40% of their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are 90 million of cash and 305 million of receivables. So the company will probably need more debt or equity financing to run their business over the next 12 months. They did have positive 1.6 billion of free cash flow, but they have negative 850 million working capital, plus their dividend payment is about $1.3 billion. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on City Office, Dream Office, SL Green, True North, and Vornado, all in the same industry as digital realty. And if digital realty has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. A good ratio to look at when valuing a REIT is price of stock over funds from operations per share. Funds from operations per share is net income plus depreciation and amortization minus the gain on sale of real estate. This company's ratio is about 20. So investors are paying $20 for $1 of funds from operations. That's actually the worst ratio of all these companies. Vernado has the best at 7.0. All their price multiples are worse than average. They have a really bad current ratio, a little better than average in ROE. They're doing well in debt, 23% compared to the average of 39%. And they're by far the biggest company of this group, but they pay the lowest dividend. 
So to summarize, I have them trading at a 37% discount. It seems like they have really good future growth potential. Plus, this is such a big company. And data centers are, of course, needed in this society. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.